Okay, um, we move on to uh, a panel discussion about understanding diversity, which will be led by Neil McLaughlin. And Neil is, from par is a partner in Cushman and Wakefield. I would like to ask Françoise Bronner, workplace researcher, Dr. Julian van Meel, partner at ICOP Consultants, uh, Michel Patisson, uh, Global Agile Workplace Director at Unilever and Boris Zielman, partner at Cushman and Wakefield. And uh, Neil, we'll take it from here. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> thank you very much. And I think the uh, Teddy Norway was a great introduction to this uh, this session, which is, as, as was described, um, looking at uh, how diversity in management styles across the globe um, relates to workplace and actually also how we bring about change. Um, I facilitated this same panel in London WorkTech two weeks ago, and we had a great discussion there. And I'm sure we'll have a, a similar discussion today. And I've got a great panel of uh, Yuri and Francois, Boris and Michel, uh, and appreciate uh, their insight and experience to this discussion. Um, the, uh, the sorry, we're on two, two. The genesis for it was uh, obviously I'm, I'm working in a global capacity and experience some of the issues that I'm sure you all experience in terms of uh, working in different environments and different cultures. Uh, but uh, I read a book by uh, a guy called Richard Lewis, who's a real um, guru in this subject. And uh, he articulated in, in, uh, in a very simple format uh, some different cultural management styles, as, as, as described on that slide there. Um, and it really resonated with me, not just from a work experience, but also from uh, my wife happens to be French, so I, I discussed this with her and, and discussed the autocratic style of uh, management with her. And uh, she said uh, that she, you know, she's certainly not an autocrat. Uh, you know, we just do things my way in our house, and uh, you know, <laughs> very, uh, very straightforward. So I'd like to just uh, discuss some of those. You know, the firstly, structure the discussion. Firstly, to understand the diversity of management styles. Secondly, to uh, determine whether there is any convergence globally in terms of the way we, we manage businesses and in terms of just the globalization of work. And thirdly, what are the uh, implications of, of uh, different management styles in terms of both the workplace design but also how we bring about change? So firstly, perhaps I'd, um, uh, I'd like to ask... Um, uh, Michelle, obviously Unilever is a, a global organization um, and uh, I'm sure you're grappling with some of these issues all the time. H how do you uh, address the differences across the globe in such a big organization? I think um, the key thing is not to address them but to embrace the differences and um, being a, a business um, that's been around for a very long time, we've grown up um, as an international business and really driven our business from very local companies, knowing local markets and um, driving leadership from, from local markets into those businesses <coughs> who know what, they, what they're doing and, what, and really what our consumers need. So um, what we've done as a strategy also, as, a, as people move up in our business, is to move those, um, those leaders around our business. Um, so we do get a cross-section and a sort of a, a cross fertilization of, of leadership styles moving across across the globe and certainly part of our management strategy is to do that and in our functional careers is to move people up and and then they start to move around which is um, I think has been a huge benefit in terms of embracing local culture and, and those leaders are having to get to know that but also I think it's also a transfer of, of Unilever's own culture and own management styles and into into the environments and into different geographies. So it almost happens by this natural movement um, across our business. And again, moving from a local and celebrating our local markets and understanding that, but then now working in a very global organization and global culture, 
we've got to recognize both and and embrace both okay thank you and maybe just t start to elaborate some of the diverse cultures uh Jurian, you've done a lot of work in 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 benelux and scandinavian countries maybe describe some of your experience um well as you say you know i, I i'm my i am dutch mm -hmm. i've worked for i'm still working in holland but uh, i moved to uh, to denmark a couple of years ago so i've also quite a bit of experience in Scandinavia. And the funny thing is that 10 years ago, when, when new ways of working was still new, I would say, um, we, we used to visit Scandinavia to look for you know, projects over there. But now it's the other way around. The Scandinavians are going to Holland to look at our projects. So something, you know, culturally, we're very much alike. But in terms of the take up of, of new office concepts and the ideas about new ways of working, there's a bit of a difference. And uh, it seems that the, in Scandinavia it's very much about stability and you know, they have a high level, high quality offices. There's not so much change there. And for some reason, the Netherlands is pretty, you know, one of the front runners in this whole development. Thank you. And Francois, I guess the obviously extreme in terms of the sort of consensus style of uh, <coughs> Scandinavia, maybe the autocratic style of uh, of, of France, uh, your insight into into the French way of doing things and, and, and managing organizations. So this is really true. We are um, autocratic, and uh, one example I can stand up here and say, Marie, will you stop taking pictures? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's French. Um, what what does it mean uh, autocratic, and what kind of impact this can have on? management styles and workplaces. Basically, our organizational model in France, we are Catholic, we are influenced by monarchy, military, religion. This is um, our tradition where command and control obey and the boss um, knows best. And when we compare, uh, very often uh, we are compared to the German, I know Udo is here, um, we have a very high um, hierarchical distance the boss in France, the CEO, are not accessible. And um, we have a very elitist system, privilege, groups, hierarchies, and we have a very directive approach. So the leadership is based on power and control. Can I get you to do things by the simple uh, charisma and influence? <coughs> not because of I'm competent or because I have skills. We have a lot of presidents of the Republic in France that didn't have skills but they had persona and basically this is quite um, interesting in um, understanding why do French people accept autocratic it's because we have something called the sense of honor the logic of honor this is something intangible and this is something that is not taught in management books the sense the logic of honor is the fact that when you go to work, you have a sense of mission and you belong to the group and you have to behave according to the rules of the group you belong to. So when a Dutch person is coming to France, if you don't understand to which group you're speaking to and what are the hidden rules, then you might not be able to do business or to make a proper meeting. And the first thing in France is get first to know the people. Do not come at 9 o'clock. <laughs> come at 11.30. And before we get into the meeting, get into the repas d'affaires. <laughs> Why is that? Why should you be inspired to work with someone you don't know? Why should you be willing to share with someone you don't trust? Let's get together. Let's understand where you come from, what you like. Let's get together, feel each other, all these elements that are unspoken. Let's get into trust. And because we trust each other, and we're gonna make decisions here in the restaurant, it's because we have created the right atmosphere. This is autocratic. Autocratic means, for me, that I'm not going to go into flexible ways of working, because as a woman, I want, uh, I'm accessing the market, um, I'm accessing power, I'm accessing career, I want a desk like the guys. Okay. So Some lessons for me in my home life, I guess. There. Yeah, uh. You see, autocratic <laughs> is very agreeable, and some people they don't want to be boss, they don't want to be leaders, and of course all of this is changing. Um, 
you will be s similarly Thank talking to me about the new uh, generation or their work and what they want or the type uh, but we had like in many countries the internet uh, boom like at the beginning of the 2000s and a lot of people went away from corporation and companies that had autocratic into egalitarian and everybody is equal everybody's having the same desk etc etc and um, what happens is in fact a business is a business and there's many ways of uh, you can be more or less autocratic but what is more important is do you want to follow the leader do you want to follow the boss do you want to to be there so autocratic is uh, is good okay thanks <laughs> autocratic is good boris um working for a <laughs> it's different in holland really. it's different in holland i was going to say what, what about your yeah. perspective on cultural dimensions well i, I really can't uh, relate to um, for example the french culture but um, to understand the diversity in management styles i would say one needs to understand uh, its cultural behavior and that can be organizational culture but it could also be national culture and um, there's quite a famous Dutch professor uh, called Geert Hofstede. Um, and he identified several dimensions on which you can classify a culture. And um, uh, I won't explain all of them, but one of those dimensions, for example, is uh, a very masculine society versus a feminine society. And um, a masculine society, for example, the US, they have a strong preference for uh, reward, uh, material reward for success, um, achievement, <coughs> as opposed to the feminine society, uh, the Dutch, but also Scandinavia, most of them uh, are quite feminine. Um, they relate to modesty, caring for the weak, cooperation. And I guess having a proper understanding of that national culture um, makes it easier for you to understand which kind of management style would influence or would have the best influence to incorporate a workplace change. And um, the only experience I have is I, I used to work for ING Real Estate and there was a, um, uh, I visited their New York office and that was quite, quite obvious to me, uh, the masculinity of that society. All the senior managers have corner offices and I'm not sure I can get them out of their corner offices. That's a very strong, um, um, justification of their personal um, uh, status. Um, being on a higher floor could relate to uh, having more power and status. Um, I really don't care. Uh, I have a team, I'm together with my team on an open plan, and I love that way of working. Uh, the power distance you were relating to, mm -hmm. um, it's a very short power distance in the Dutch market. So it's no, hey, Mr. Zeermans uh, in Holland, it's, hey, Grandpa, you got to keep up or we'll overtake you in a second, right? <laughs> so, um, well, that may be a little exaggerated, but uh, yeah. you understand where I'm coming from. So okay, uh, so we've highlighted really the diversity there. Yeah. Challenge to the panel now, is, is there any convergence going on globally? Julian, in terms of your work and, and your projects, are you experiencing any convergence in different styles? I think there's, a, there's actually quite a number of examples great examples where there's a lot of convergence. If you look like, you know, it's almost a cliche to, to mention Google as an example, but they have a very, you know, they're within Google, their, their office style has almost become a signature part of their identity, of their culture. So it's very similar across the world, wherever you are. There's the same look and feel, the same atmosphere, the same uh, concept. Um, I think there's also a convergence if you look at more the younger startup com uh, companies, uh, like Francoise was already mentioning. Mm -hmm. If you look at companies that are being started, started by youngsters or, or people in their 30s uh, that grow up with all with the sort of the same technological developments, there's a lot of convergence over there. I think the most, the, the contrast is what we see in the large corporations that have corporate standards that are you know, slow at changing, uh, where there's a lot of established status that people don't want to give up. That's where the diversity is. But I think, you know, the younger technology-oriented, design-oriented, creative companies, there's a lot of convergence. Okay, and Michel, in, uh, in Unilever, is there any signs of convergence? Uh, is the younger generation having an impact on the way things are done? I, I th well, there is convergence, and I think it's more being driven by our consumers and the way that we are having to work on a much more global sort of scale. Um, so I think we've got to now cross boundaries um, 
in the way that we think about our products and our brands rather than it just being very local. So you've got to take into account a border um, perspective. I mean, we've now got a number of our brands being run on a, on a global basis, Dove, some of our deodorant brands, things like that, where you, in order to get ourselves as an efficient um, marketing business, we've got to start thinking across that and taking that into account. And I think that's sort of forcing, maybe not conversions, recognition of a local, but taking a, a stand of what is common, what, what, is, what, what, can we, what can we take with that? And similar in our workplaces, which is what, is what are some of the commonalities that we can get some efficiency and effectiveness out of, and then what do we celebrate as a local point as well? Boris, from your experience of uh, uh, working in a big global organisation like Cushman's, mm -hmm. how, how do you see um, any convergence and uh, how, how we manage our business mm -hmm. in terms of... Uh, um, commonality of the I way we do is. things. Yeah, I think it is converging as well. Um, not only uh, working at Cushman and Wakefield, but also working with corporates like Unilever or uh, Ernst & Young or other corporates we um, assist in their um, a real estate process. Um, it is much more globalized and um, I think there's a, a big professionalization going on uh, in that corporate sector as well. Um, and um, maybe even divide in re divided in regions, and I think it's uh, very good that Unilever still has that local flavor that is necessary also to uh, be able to enable that other workplace strategy, but uh, in general, there are corporate guidelines and they will be laid out throughout the world. Francoise, in terms of the, you already talked briefly about the sort of the younger generation, is, is that coming into you know, a conflict at all with the traditional way of um, approach in, in France? Um, I wouldn't think so, and I would just rebound on this idea of, of convergence. Mm -hmm. The fact that um, I've been uh, doing research lately um, in a number of banks and in a number of pharmaceutical companies. And you have merger acquisition, you have uh, international, um, more international uh, workforce coming in, uh, diversity. And what is very interesting is um, the purpose of why do we come together, why do we work together, so people converge on the corporate goals, innovation. So uh, re developing new product, developing new services. And here, uh, what is interesting is that the um, management style, autocratic, is very um, dynamic into making decisions, um, going forward, sometimes very, very quickly, and uh, of course, sometimes involving uh, the um, employees and collaborators into co-creating the processes. And French people are conservative, but also very quick to make a revolution and change extremely quickly. That makes it really interesting to, to work um, in the French context, is that uh, there is always something magical uh, happening at some mo moment or, or another. For the younger generation, what is really funny is that sometimes you have Generation Y who want status and who want big desks, these big desks, and you have baby boomers who want um, to be flexible where and agile where you think it would be the other way around. But most importantly is that, um, and here I speak from my heart as a, as a French people, um, what matters for us as a masculine culture but quite sometimes uh, also feminine, is that we want to be happy. We believe that going to work, that the state, that the government, the president, should make us happy. We, um, coming to France is about the quality of life. It's not the career. It's your friends, the good food, the good wine. Um, going to work, we, we don't mind the two hours metro, Mr. Jimenez, <laughs> because we want to be with the others. We are a Latin culture. We want to be together as a group and as a... That's funny, the convergence with Mr. Obama, we, we rise and fall, or at least drink wine as one nation. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sounds the great. convergence. Okay, what I want to do is just open the, fl uh, the, fl uh, the discussion up to the, uh, the audience and just maybe one or two questions before we move on to the final bit, which is around looking at some of these, you know, what, what do these issues mean in terms of actually the workplace and the way we bring out change. Is there a, a question for the panel? One observation or reflection from, I'm sure there's a broad base of experience out there as well. Yes, sir. 
think that you're the furthest person away from the microphone, but we'll get there eventually. Um, Yurian, you, you were just talking about uh, Google as, a, as an example of a, uh, a global company showing a convergence in, in work styles. Um, but there's also more mentioning of other global companies operating globally. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen it myself yet that um, that companies like Google they truly uh, um, have a convergent uh, management style. It seems more like they have their own management style and replicate it like globally. So in that sense, yes, it's converging because in every country is the same. But it's like one Google saying this is the way we work, mm. and that's how mm. everybody starts to work. Yeah. Um, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Then you can discuss the merits of that, but you know they have a very strong culture, which translate into a very strong, you know, office concepts, which is being replicated. All but over is it a not not a, a, a national culture, but a, a brand or a company culture? So yeah, it's yeah not industry about culture and a company culture. It, it's but but apparently, the, you know, if you look at companies that have a strong company culture, and I, I guess that Unilever probably also an example of that is that the, the, the company culture is more stronger than the national culture. And that's the difference if you, if, you have, if you look at the international companies that have sort of grown by, you know, taking over, buying local firms, which each bring their own local, you know, culture and norms and values, that's very different. Mm -hmm. That's more like, a, you know, then you get sort of a fragmented group of cultures. We, we had an interesting experience of, um, buying, for instance, Ben and Jerry's in, yeah. in the US, which is a great example of a huge corporate eating up a small little interesting company. And in, in that buyout was very, very clearly stated around, we're going to hold on to our values yeah. and, and everything. So it's a, and then that brings a new dynamic into Unilever as well. So yeah, you could easily have, you know, destroy, I mean, you're Absolutely. buying a smaller and company because of their, you know, innovative <laughs> and unique. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Still like Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> okay, I'd like to move on now to understanding some of the uh, what some of these issues mean to the actual workplace design and, and how we bring about change. And uh, uh, and maybe Boris would uh, kick kick us off in terms of, of your experience. Uh, what's the actual end result of of these issues? Well, um, if I relate it to the Dutch market, I can say it is a fairly flat culture, so the power distance is very very short. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, as an end result, you have a very collaborative, open environment, um, which I think is very healthy in um, launching new ideas and, and, and new concepts, uh, if you will. So um, I think that's why the climate in Holland, uh, and it would be easier to incorporate uh, workplace change in, for example, the Dutch market as opposed to Singapore or, or the US. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty close to it. <laughs> uh, Francoise, uh, can the workplace be used as a catalyst for change in, in, in French market? Yeah, um, absolutely. But other elements uh, are also catalysts. What I want to say, it's not because you have a, a hierarchical um, or autocratic that you don't have collaboration. It's just that the forms of communication, the forms of management, and the forms of collaboration the way you exchange are completely different. But because of the logic of honor, um, if you fail to collaborate, if you fail to your mission, there's a sense of shame, there's a sense of duty. So sometimes in France, you see groups forming or people colla do collaborate and work together, but with such an intent, such a motivation, which is linked to the honor. You see, it's not because it's autocratic. Autocratic doesn't mean lack of collaboration. And again, what is interesting is that, of course, autocratic means hierarchy, so there is a hierarchy of spaces. The boss have big office with uh, maybe soft seating area, big, uh, big boardrooms, even sometimes there is an office restaurant only for the, for the chiefs, for, for the exec uh, high executives. But most importantly uh, today, um, people tend to look at the workplace as a resource to achieve organizational goals. And therefore, in France, um, we have been experimenting open space, from enclosed to open. This doesn't increase communication. Work is not a place. 
work is a state of mind. So how do you create the right space for the right activity? How do you consider the processes of that company, its culture, its way of communicating? And again, Mrs. Peach told before that uh, what was important is a unique solution. So at the moment, in France, what, what is happening is that we have really an emphasis on how do we create workplaces that are really fit for the purpose that are really articulating the cultural, the managerial, the human, the technological dimension. And I'm sure that in the future, come to France. And you will see, uh, there has been some big project lately, especially the Crédit Agricole, who uh, has done a campus over 160,000 square meters, 10,000 people. They came to the Netherlands to see what was happening and then they devised and they, came, they went to the UK, they went everywhere in the world, and they divide, devised a very special, very French environment. So innovation in the workplace will come from Correct. everywhere. Okay, I think you're doing a really good sales job on France there, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, I would like to ask more questions, but I don't think we're going to have time. So um, I'm a, feel free to, we're, we're having a break anyway, but feel free to uh, uh, continue the discussion with the panel over a coffee, and uh, I'd like to thank the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.